cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and if you are one of Vsauce's 11 million subscribers like I am, then you may have seen his video this week on the brachistochrone problem. The premise of this problem is to find the slope between point A up here and point B down here, by which a ball will slide between the two points in the shortest amount of time. This curve is also called a totochrone, and that is Greek for same time, because wherever you put a ball on this slope, it'll theoretically reach point B in the same amount of time. It's a pretty wild concept and quite difficult to wrap your head around, but the math is there. Vsauce, of course, has a great explanation of how this curve is made, and if you're interested in that, you should check it out after you finish this video. Anyways, what I'm getting at is I really wanted to play around with this idea of the totochrone, so I made this. This is my totochrone track. It's got that very specific curve I'm talking about right here. That's what it looks like. But with this model, I created 12 of these tracks all right next to each other. And that's so I could test this quality of a ball always taking the same amount of time to reach the end, no matter where on the track you put it. So I've got some tiny steel balls that I'm gonna place on these tracks, one in each groove. And check out what happens when I tilt it back. So, I've got all these ball bearings now held in place with magnets underneath, and I have a special release mechanism that will allow me to drop all these balls at once. It's the ultimate test of the Tadachrone curve. So, let's try it out. All right, in three, two, one. Well, that's very cool, and they do seem to be hitting at the same time, but I think we're gonna have to see this in slow motion. Well, on top of these little balls being very difficult to manage, it seems like they're creating a bit of a problem because they're so light that any little tiny imperfection in this track is gonna affect the way they roll down. And even though this is 3D printed and it is very accurate, it's not perfect. We have to remember that this Totochrome problem is based on a theoretical track that has absolutely no friction. So there is some effect, of course, from the friction here. How about we try some larger ball bearings, which should negate those effects a little bit better. I just love that magnetic setup. It's almost more satisfying than the actual drop itself. But in any case, that is my Totochrone track. I hope you guys liked it. And um, well, stick around. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I actually went about making this now. So if you're interested in that, don't leave just yet. So here is my original SolidWorks model. And if I hide this top track piece, you can see what's going on underneath. I've got this sloped magnetic part the bottom is in two pieces that snap together, and then I've got this wall going all the way around. These flat circle bits on the bottom of the wall are meant to hold it down while I'm printing it, and then they'll be cut off after the fact. So here's that track printing out, and I printed it in vase mode, so rather than printing layer by layer, this part is actually printed as a very thin coil. You can see as it got higher up in the print, the curve got a little bit deformed, and that somewhat affected the tracks. While there is some inconsistency here, I figured it was good enough for the demonstration. Next up, I printed that magnetic rack, and it printed out nice and easily. This wider part on the bottom is called a raft, and that is another sacrificial piece that is just made to help keep the part down while it's being printed. I glued the magnets in position using a strong industrial glue, and I had those dots 
modeled in so that I know exactly where to put them. I spaced the magnets apart and then waited for those three to dry before adding more in between them, that way they wouldn't be attracting each other and moving around while I'm trying to glue it down. It also helps to have the same pole facing up for all the magnets. Here you can see those bottom panels printing out. And as you can see, those are also printed on a raft so the edges don't curl up. The separation distance between my raft and the part was maybe a little too close, so I really had to be patient and scrape off all the bits of plastic on the bottom. And then I finished everything off by sanding it flat. Alright guys, I don't know how, but I think I managed to get the bed level enough on my first try to actually print this gigantic part. Fingers crossed. It's going overnight too, so everything crossed. Yeah. Despite my cautious optimism, those sacrificial pads and a perfectly level build plate still weren't enough to keep my part stuck down. As you can see here near the back of the part. When a part is this large, the temperature change as the plastic cools creates a lot of contraction. And that's why it's so difficult to keep this part down. So, I'm gonna try something that I haven't done before personally, but a lot of people recommend, and that is using a glue stick on the build plate. Makes sense, glue should hold it down, right? It's, it's the purpose of glue. So I just went ahead and rubbed that glue stick wherever there's gonna be plastic touching the build plate, which is basically this giant rectangle here. And I gave it another shot. Pretty early in, I could see that the layers were starting to peel up again, so I decided to add a touch of super glue. I mean, I've never heard of anyone doing that, but I just really wanted this to stick down, and it was gonna be printing all night, so I was gonna do what I needed to do. While my effort wasn't totally in vain, the part did in fact stick down really well. But as you can see, this part is just a little too flimsy, so this wall became all concave, and there was this giant crack all along the back. I just wasn't going to be able to live with it. So I decided to go back into SolidWorks and beef up those walls a bit. So I made them just one millimeter thicker because unfortunately the part was already the maximum size that I could fit on my build plate. In addition to that, however, I created these ribs along the inside that will really add a lot of strength and stability. So back to the printer it was once more. And this time I was printing a little bit slower, just to be cautious. But if you look at that far left corner, you'll see it just pop off. And that was enough to screw up a layer and cause the whole thing to start failing. So I had to print it one more time. I was very determined to make this my last print. So I brought my printer from my cold garage into my slightly warmer living room in hopes that it would reduce the amount of shrinkage and stress on the build plate. And I also used a ton of super glue all around the edge again. Luckily, it finally worked out, and I had the full part printed pretty flawlessly in a single piece. And you'll be happy to know that super glue scraped off quite easily. So to finish up this part, I used an X-Acto knife to carefully cut away the sacrificial brims. I'm able to keep the ones in the corner, but these ones on the side interfere with the snap fit, so I had to cut those off. Alright, that's almost it. I just needed some springs for my magnetic rack mechanism, so I just stole them from these G2 pens I have. I can always replace that ink into another pen, so it's not like I'm wasting them. And finally, to get the balls for my track, I just took apart some old skateboard bearings that I had. I removed the rubber seal using a push pin, and then I used this spiky tool and a mallet to hit out the spacer in between the balls. With the spacer removed, you can just move all the balls onto one side of the bearing, and then it should come apart pretty easily. Lastly, I swirled them around in some WD-40 just to clean off any of that grease. Okay, we have our parts. Here are the two floor pieces, and boy do they fit together in the most satisfying way. I gave these a 0.2 millimeter tolerance and it works perfectly on my printer. 
Next, I placed those springs in their registration holes on either side of the magnetic rack, and that all just snaps together. Then I went ahead and put the walls around it. And the walls have these built-in slots that will hold the magnetic rack in place, as well as snap fits to connect to those bottom pieces. The top track just slides right in there and snaps into place as well. Then it's ready to go. Alright guys, there you have it, my Tadachrone track. This was a super fun project, definitely very challenging and frustrating at times, but the end result is so cool that I can't complain. If you're liking what you see on this channel, make sure you're subscribed and you've got that little notification button checked so you see all the cool stuff I come up with in the future. Until next time, I'm Devin, and this is Make Anything. Stay inspired.